Hello fellow collectors, I hope you were doing wonderfully well. Today I thought I'd do a pickups video, taking you through the things I've picked up over the last couple of months, during the great sales that we've had. HMV in particular had some amazing discounts with some of the lowest prices I've seen in years, which was pretty nice. And I'll also go through my indicator sale purchases as well. So, let's dive right in. First up is a Curzon release of Godland, which I just watched the other day actually. This was, my goodness, really quite an experience. Sombre and epic, absolutely stunningly shot in Iceland. And this one dropped to only £6, so I snapped it up. And for that, it was an absolute steal. Yeah, really keen to now watch some more from the director, from Hilmir Parmesan. Uh, so I'll be on the lookout for A White White Day in particular, which looks really quite intriguing and also has some of the same actors in too. Next, we have an Arrow Academy which is Ishmael's Ghost. I've had my eye on this one for a little while, but I have heard and read reviews that say this one is mediocre at best, so I haven't exactly been rushing to pick it up. But I think all three main actors here are absolutely superb. We've got Charlotte Gainsborough, Mathieu Almaric, and Marianne Cotillard. So really I've bought it just on the strengths that I know their performances will have. So I have some high expectations and some much lower, but curious to check it out for myself. And I managed to snag it for just under £5, so can't really complain. And then another Arrow Academy, which is Dark River. One that I've been wanting to watch for a little while now, ever since I saw Ruth Wilson in the film True Things, which I know she had a big part in getting made. I haven't actually seen her in too much. I've seen just a couple episodes of Luther, which she was very solid in. But watching True Things really made me interested to see some more from her. So I grabbed this one. And it sounds kind of similar to um, a little-known British film called The Leveling, which I watched about a year ago now, and which I really liked. And that starred Ellie Kendrick from Game of Thrones. And of course, Dark River also stars a Game of Thrones actor, Mark Stanley. So yeah, looking forward to checking this one out. And then onto my small indicator haul from their sale. And the first one up is Remember the Night. I'm a big fan of Barbara Stanwyck, so I've had my eye to pick this one up since they announced it. And I was absolutely delighted that this lovely edition was included in the recent sale. I also like Fred McMurray, uh, just in the few things I've seen him in, haven't seen him in too much. But yeah, I heard this was a romantic Christmassy movie, so that'll be one I get to fairly soon as, of course, it's the season. And then next we have The Big Gun Down with, of course, the legendary Lee Van Cleef. I enjoyed this one quite a lot for the most part. Um, it took a while to get going for me, but once it did, I became really quite engaged. It was a really interesting story where Van Cleef plays a lawman who is relentless in his pursuit of a criminal who has committed just a horrible crime. And yet the criminal himself is quite likeable, quite jovial and a bit of a cad. It's a bit of a classic chase em down style western, and apparently there's not quite a sequel, but another film about the same character of Cuchillo, played by Thomas Millian, uh, the criminal in this, which I heard about while watching a video of Niels from Niels Movie Place. And it's also a film which is in the Masters of Cinema line, so definitely one I'll be picking up for sure. And next we have Death of a Gunfighter. Again, this is a case where I really like the actor here, Richard Widmark. Um, and this year in particular, I seem to be making my way through a whole load of westerns, and so this one seemed like a good choice. I did watch this one already and thought it was just fine, though, nothing special. Um, it actually feels a little bit strange, and despite being made in 1969, it felt like a very 70s film, just in the way that it's shot and how it looks. And the soundtrack just didn't quite fit for me here either. Bit of a strange western that feels like it was made sort of long after westerns had fallen out of pop culture, but still an interesting watch. And then, last but not least, we have Bluebeard's Eight Wife. I don't know anything about this one, except that, again, I'm a fan of the actors here, Claudette Colbert, David Niven, and Gary Cooper. And of course, directed by the legendary Ernst Lubitsch. Uh, and with a screenplay, in part at least, by Billy Wilder. So this film has just about everything going for it, so very curious to dive in. Then we move on to some BFI pickups, and we'll start with EO. 
Uh, earlier this year, I watched Oh Hazar Balthazar, um, so I'll be pretty curious to see how this one stacks up with that classic from Bresson. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about this one, so yeah, definitely got high hopes. And then we have the rules of the game. <laughs> I'll spare you my French pronunciation. Um, this one is very high up on the Sight and Sound's top 100 list, um, just outside the top 10 actually, so I've snapped it up when it came on sale. So far, I've only seen one from Jean Renoir, which was The Grand Illusion, and I thought it was absolutely great. So very much looking forward to this one, um, especially given its reputation. Um, though I did read, interestingly, that people hated it at the time, publicly and critically, and apparently he even had a hard time in getting it released in France, as it was sort of seen as unpatriotic, so that's just made me even more interested to, uh, to check it out. And next, we have One of Our Aircraft Is Missing, which I believe is Paul and Pressberger's first collaboration. Um, I think I want to talk about this one in some more detail in a later video, so I won't say too much here, but it's a propaganda film made during the war and released in 1942. Um, very solid enough war film, though it kind of lacks some of their f later flair, I think, um, but no doubt was made under very difficult and stringent conditions, of course, and this particular release is absolutely lovely. I think the BFI have done yeah, a really fantastic job with it. And... Next, we have Madame D, or I think the full English title is uh, The Earrings of Madame D. Um, this one is from the 1001 Movies list, which uh, is what got me interested in seeing it. Um, I don't actually think I've seen any films so far by the director, Max Ophelis. Um, so yeah, really keen, to, really keen to start checking out his filmography. And lastly from the BFI is Le Pau Dos, I think, and though I've probably absolutely butchered that title. <laughs> this is a Truffaut film starring Françoise Dorlac, who I loved recently in The Young Girls of Rochefort. This one is about a secret affair, I believe, um, but honestly just the fact that it's a Truffaut film is more than enough to get me interested in seeing it. I've really been enjoying the BFI's um, releases so far. They've been releasing um, quite a lot of Truffaut's films over the sort of the last year, year and a half. So, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing this one. Moving on, and having been really impressed with Umbrella Entertainment's Pusher box set, I dived into the small Black Friday sale that they had and got myself two of their world cinema titles. The first one being Run Lola Run, which I had been after for quite some time, especially in a nicer edition like this, as it's another one from the 1001 Movies list. It is a German film, and I actually looked extensively in Germany when I was there, but never found it, sadly. But Umbrella to the Rescue, because this is a fantastic release. This is another one that I won't say too much about now, because I think, again, I'll talk about it in a later video. But suffice to say that I absolutely loved it. Definitely not what I was expecting, but an adrenaline fueled ride that is possibly the most 90s movie, movie I, that I've ever seen. And if you like Edgar Wright's films and haven't checked this one out, I think you'll definitely be a fan of it. Next is another German film, which is Never Look Away. Since getting into Christian Petzold's films earlier this year, I've been wanting to watch more modern German releases. And an actor that he's worked with a few times now, including in his most recent film, A Fire, which was also brilliant, is Paula Beer. And looking at her filmography, I came across this one a little while ago. Again, it's another that I think I'll talk about a little bit more later, but it was astonishing. Absolutely magnificent. Superb. This was an incredible journey that I could not recommend more highly. So two blind buys from Umbrella and two absolutely fantastic films. Up next, and I snagged a couple amazing deals from eBay for some out-of-print Eureka titles. I have no idea why these were so cheap, but I got both of these for just under £20 in total, so that's less than £10 each. And being so long out of print, they usually go for around £30 each these days, which is obviously outrageous. So yeah, I had to, had to get these being so cheap. The first one here is Red River, which I also recently got the media book for. Uh, because I wasn't able to get this edition. But I guess that's how it happens sometimes, right? 
But thankfully, the film was great. So, yeah, really glad to have both of them. I'll say that I'm not really a big fan of John Wayne, but Montgomery Clift always gives a great performance, and here is no different. This one follows the story of a desperate 1,000-mile cattle drive following the Civil War and some sort of economic collapse in the south of the US. And so they're forced to take a huge number of cattle on this mammoth journey. It's a film full of bravado, ego, stubborn willfulness, as well as tension, pain and betrayal. Just, yeah, this was an absolutely solid western. And then we have Man of the West, starring Gary Cooper and Lee J. Cobb. And of course, directed by Anthony Mann, um, a director whose films I've really been enjoying this last year. So yeah, I'm really excited to check this one out. I will say that I wasn't a huge fan of Gary Cooper's other very famous Western, which was High Noon. Um, so yeah, hoping that I connect a bit more with this film. But given the director, I think, thankfully, that that's almost a certainty. So looking forward to it. And then we've got just one from Radiance which is this lovely box set here of Commedia all'Italiana. I actually wasn't planning on getting this one, but having recently watched uh, the Film Collector Archives video, David's video, where he unboxed it and talked about it, he definitely got me a lot more interested in seeing this one. And also, there was an extra 20% off sale that HMV did, so I decided just to go for it. And I know that Il Sor Paso um, is a film... Uh, this one here, uh, is a film that Martin Scorsese talks about a lot. So, yeah, I'm sure this will be an absolutely fantastic box set and, yeah, definitely couldn't pass it up for, for such a great deal. Then a couple of titles that I picked up from FOP in Covent Garden just the other day. The first is actually my first film pickup from 101 Movies. Uh, sorry, 101 Movies, 101 Films, and it's Tell No One. I've had this one on my list for so long, so I decided it was finally time to grab it and watch it. And I actually watched it immediately later that same day. Um, I'd kind of liken this film to something like The Guest for me. Um, not in content at all, but just in that, the fact that I found the sort of first three quarters utterly captivating. And it absolutely had me hook, line and sinker, but I thought the ending just kind of let it down quite a bit. Um, Sadly, but it was yeah, still an absolutely solid watch and yeah, very glad, very glad to have it. And then we've got The Lives of Others, which is another one that I've wanted for many years now. And having just watched uh, Florian Henkel von Donnersmark's film uh, Never Look Away, the umbrella edition from it, um, I immediately bought this one because even if it's half as good as that film, it will definitely be money well spent, that's for sure. And next we have one that I have been patiently waiting for it to go on sale. The Steelbook of Tremors in 4K from Arrow Video. I absolutely love this film. It's so, so good. And I've been wanting to get the 4K of it since, uh, since Arrow announced it. But I just wasn't really a big fan of the artwork on Arrow's limited, uh, limited edition release of it. Um, and of course, it's just the same on their standard Amore as well. But this artwork for me... I think it just looks and feels right, but I was kind of loath to pay the £30 it was selling for. Very grateful that it dropped in the sale to about £14, and then I managed to get another 10% off that as well with Zavi. So in the end, well worth the wait to get such a classic for such a reasonable price. Yeah, I can't wait to revisit this one in 4K. And I actually just watched it again for the first time um, on Blu-ray uh, earlier this year, and I had such a blast. So yeah, <laughs> definitely one that I can't wait to see to see again soon. And then finally onto a couple special ones to finish things off. And for me, actually, these were even more special than usual because aside from just being very lovely releases, they were actually my 1,000th and 1,001st Blu-ray pickups. So quite the landmark titles for me. And I'd been thinking about what I wanted to make my 1,000th film for a while, as obviously I knew it was coming up soon. And with The Fifth Element unexpectedly coming back in stock, I absolutely snapped it up. Um, and then finally decided, after a long time of umming and ahhing, to grab Leon as well. And I can yeah, very gratefully say it looks much better in person than it did in the photos. These are both Luc, Benz, Luc Besson films, and both with sort of fairly unhinged performances from Gary Oldman, which, of course, are always a lot of fun to watch. 
I actually haven't seen the fifth element for so many years now, so I'm sure there must be parts that I've forgotten about. So, yeah, really looking forward to diving into such a wild film again. And of course, Leon is, yeah, it's a stone cold classic. And I just watched it, uh, revisited it the other day. And I'm glad to say that it is absolutely brilliant still. I'm so glad to have such an impressive edition of it. And so that brings us to the end of the video and all my recent pickups over the last couple of months. We definitely had some of the best physical media sales I've seen in years, which I was so grateful for. And I was really glad to pick up more than a few titles that I've had on my list for a good long while. But that is everything from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.